let's open the notebook 01 variables. One of the things you would have to unlearn today is counting. In Python, counting starts from zero. So you need to relearn how you count, especially when you are a Python programmer, counting starts from zero. So we are on a second notebook, 01 variables. We'll go to the notebook. As I explained before, as I'm talking to you, explain this, no typing, you can just look at the code and ask your questions. You can understand what's going on. You can ask questions. At the end of the notebook, we have an exercise. That's where you'll type some code and do some uh, submit exercise. Okay. Let's go through this notebook. One of the first things you need to learn when you learn a new programming language is variables. Variables are place, uh, variables are things that can hold some value and you can recall them later. In Python, you have variables which are text or numbers. You can store either text or numbers in them. If you want to store, create a variable, let's say we are creating a variable called city, we are assigning it the value called San Francisco. Here we have another variable called state and we are assigning the value California. When you create a variable, anything that you put without quotes in Python is interpreted as a variable. So you can see city, there's no quote around it. That means it's a variable. If you put stuff inside quote that is interpreted as a text. So what this is saying is create a variable city, store the value San Francisco in it, create a variable state, print, store the value California in it. Let's run this cell. Nothing happened. You just created a variable, they are there, and you have the value. I'm going to start a new cell and I'm going to print city. What do you think will be the output of the cell? When I run this cell, what do you think will be the output? When you ask to see the variable, uh, it says, I will take the value that is stored in the variable and show you. What about this now? If I say print city in quotes, what do you think will be the output? When you put something in quotes that is interpreted by Python as text, when you do not put quotes, Python says this must be a variable. I'll go and find the value of it. Okay? One of the biggest mistakes as beginners you will face is when should I put quotes and when not to put quotes. Whenever you're referring to something that is a function or a variable, do not put quotes. Whenever you are referring to something that is text, refer to that as quotes. The print is a function that can print multiple things. I can say print me both city and state and it'll print me both the values. And it says San Francisco and California. What about this? Print city plus state. And answer is it might be an error. And that is true for many programming languages. It will say city is a text, state is a text. You can't do arithmetic with two texts. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Python says, I know what you mean. I'll, I think you just want to join them together because and you say this plus this in terms of text, we'll just join it together. Right? So Python behaves a little differently than other languages that you might have worked with. It will support a lot of these operations where it'll say, it depend on the context. So if you give two ticks, you'll join them. If you give two numbers, you'll add them. And right? so the operation de depends on the context of the variables. So you just join them. When you join two ticks, again, there's no space between them. So there's no space here. You can say print city plus comma plus state, and then it'll print San Francisco comma California. So this is how text works in Python. You can assign to any variable and uh, print that. There are other kinds of variables in Python. You can create variables that contain numbers. And contrary to many other programming languages, where you to say, I'm creating variable of this type. Python, you can just create a variable and assign the value. You don't have to declare what is the type of variable. So here I'm creating some new variables, population, latitude, longitude. Three variables, I've given it some numbers and I've run this. So I've created those variables. Let's print population. I print population, it prints the value of the population. Simple enough. Now the trick question. What will happen? I've created a variable called population equals 881,549. And I'm now saying population equals 1 million in quotes. What do you think will happen? Let's see. It worked. Many programming languages will not allow you to do this. It said population is a variable of type number. You can't assign text to it. You have to assign a number to it. You can't change the type of variable in your program. Python says, fine. You want to assign a text? Go ahead. I'll, I'll accept that. And if I just 
you know, print the value, it is now 1 million. So we had a variable which had a number. Later on, when we assign a text, Python accepts that and uses that as a value. This behavior is called dynamic typing. So your variables can change the type of their the type from numbers to text to different types during the course of the program. This is a very different kind of programming language than statically typed languages. There are languages that will say, once you declare that this is variable, it can only store numbers, you cannot assign any other type to it. It'll give an error. Okay? So Python is a dynamically typed language. This is makes it very easy for beginners. So you know it makes it approachable, but also has a lot of downsides. If your friends say, oh, you're learning Python, I hate Python because it's dynamically typed. They mean this, right? And it might seem like a small thing, but when you have large programs, this can cause a lot of unexpected bugs and hard to debug errors. So a lot of people say, you don't use Python to build very large systems because it's dynamically typed. But this is what it is. So one of the features of Python is it's dynamically typed. You can change the type of the variable during the course. So let's run the cell again. If I Check the, define the variable. There's a function called type, which will tell you what is the type of the variable. Right now it says, this is an integer. We, because we assign an integer, the type of the variable is an integer. Now, when I assign a text to it and check the type, it has become a string. So it was an integer. Later on in the program, this became string. This behavior is accepted in Python because it's dynamically typed. Another feature of Python is you can type some code and immediately run it, right? I can type some code and say, print this value and it prints it. There's no need to compile the language and wait for the compilation to happen. This is also a feature of the language where you can type some code and immediately see the result. In other program language, it's not possible. You have to take the code, compile it and get a binary file and then you can run that. So this is called an interpreted language versus a compiled language. So Python is an interpreted language where you can just throw some code, it interpret and send you the result back. There's no need for compile. That also makes the programming very fast. So your development is very fast. You type some code, see the result. And that's because Python is an interpret language. So one of the features of Python that you learn, it's uh, dynamically typed. It's also interpreted. Okay. Both good and bad things. Once you have your variables, you can do some math with it. So let's say we have this elevation feet variable. We are assigning some numbers. You can do some conversion. So if you want to convert feet into meters, this is the conversion factor. You can say, take the value of this variable elevation feet, multiply by this number, and you have elevation meters, right? So you can do math with it. The star is the multiplication symbol. Forward slash is the division symbol. So if you want to compute the area, you can say I have a population and I have area. I want to compute the density. So I have the population of San Francisco. I have the area in square miles, I can compute the density. 18,800 people per square mile. That is the density. And you can do some basic math with Python. This was our introduction to variables in Python. Let's do the exercise to try this out in a new cell in below. Big time, you can explain the exercise.